Hey what's up everyone? In my last video I broke down some of my favourite outfits that users had posted in the subreddit r streetwear. A lot of you seem to enjoy that because it's just regular people with a broad range of styles and tastes and it gave you inspiration that you could incorporate into your own outfits. I only went through five outfits because it would take far too long to go through all of them but there were plenty more that deserve attention so here are five more for you. This time I'll be sure to link the actual Reddit posts down in the description box, so be sure to head over there and show them some love if you liked their outfits. I'll try to link all the items I can down in the description box in case you want to try out these looks for yourself. So just like the last video, I am looking at the fits on my phone, so excuse me if I'm looking off screen. Okay, so starting off with a very strong look here, and the thing that drew me to this outfit was pure intrigue. I was really curious about that jacket and in particular that hood slash hat. I wasn't sure if it was part of the outfit or just a very well matched piece. But then I started to look closer at the outfit and I saw more and more details that got me really excited. So let's break it down. So starting with that top piece and this is actually the Le Maire rain cape. It's essentially a poncho but with some super nice details like that bucket hat style hood and also a built-in tote bag that looks like it can be detached. I swear I've always loved the look and idea of ponchos. They have this effortlessly oversized look whilst also being really practical, keeping you warm and dry. Seeing them in this fit just solidifies my love for them. I believe this Le Maire one is from their Autumn Winter 2020 collection, so probably quite hard to get hold of now but there seem to be plenty of alternatives available, which I'll link down below. He's added a bag to this fit and it's the Bottega Veneta padded tech cassette. It seems a little redundant since the rain cape already has a built-in bag, but I can see why he's done it because the dark color creates contrast and a piece of interest to the outfit. It's a cool little piece and has that iconic Bottega Veneta pattern. However, the price is eye-watering and not really worth it in my opinion. He's also added some nice keychains to the little attachment points where the tote bag of the jacket would usually be. It looks like one of them is the Prada leather robot keyring and the other is the Loewe red elephant keyring which also acts as a small pouch. By the way, how is my pronunciation on that? I've also just noticed that he's got a wrist pouch on as well. It's definitely Prada and it looks like the pouch that comes with the re-nylon belt. These sorts of small details are what really separates fashion from style in my opinion. On their own they don't seem like much but styled like this they add so much to an outfit. Now the pants are from Phipps I think is how you pronounce it and they seem to be a super cool brand. They not only make new garments, but they customize vintage pieces as well and give them a new lease of life. I know a lot of people do this already, but it's quite unusual to see larger brands doing it. Couldn't identify these pants. They might be the dad top stitch pants, which are essentially a pair of cotton boot cuts, which shouldn't be too hard to find. He says the boots are from Jill Sander, but he doesn't specify the model. I believe just doing a bit of Googling that they are the full winter 19, antique 999 boot. Being an older model, it's going to be hard to find these, but an exaggerated chunky sole Chelsea boot would be a good alternative. Overall, it's just a great spring fit that looks like it'll keep you warm and dry, and I think you could replicate it pretty easily with more affordable pieces. Okay, this next outfit jumped out at me because of the amount of colour and textures that have been incorporated while still keeping the outfit cohesive and not over the top. The cap is thrifted, but it looks to be a fairly straightforward red trucker cap, which you can find just about anywhere. The sweater is also vintage and is from an 80s brand called Raquel. They seemed to feature a lot of pieces made in Peru, which is quite unheard of these days. And this piece seems to be part of a sub collection that the brand called Raquel's Collection which all feature these sort of colourful and childish designs with 3D plush characters. It was actually surprisingly easy to find some of these on eBay and Etsy if you're interested in getting one yourself. The pants are definitely the star of the show though. He says they're custom patchwork jeans and I'm not sure if he made them himself or he had someone else make them, but they are so well done. 
Patchwork is definitely going to be really popular in 2023. I think it's really difficult to get right because it can come off as a bit naff but these are stunning. I think it also helps that the shape of the jeans is really nice. They look like a pair of boot cuts and seem to have perfect fraying at the hems. I wish you would have said what brand these base pair of jeans were because I want some in every color. The coat is another vintage piece. It's a long brown trench coat, which is easily available as new or old if you want one. The key here is how he has incorporated it into the outfit. The earthy muted color just tones down the whole outfit slightly since the pieces beneath it are quite loud and in your face. I also like how he's accessorized the jacket with some pins. You see it a lot on denim jackets, but not so much with trench coats. On feet, he's gone vintage again with these cowboy boots. These look to be in a dark red or oxblood color. These types of boots are super easy to find secondhand. An advantage of going vintage is that the leather will already be broken in, and have some nice distressing to it. I think this outfit has done a great job of incorporating fun and colorful designs while remaining mature and very wearable. All right, this next one is inspired by the UPS man, apparently. And even though it is funny to make that comparison, the actual outfit is really solid and well thought out, as you're about to see. He says the tee is the Uniqlo Aerism t-shirt. It's a shirt I mention in almost every video, you cannot go wrong with it. He's picked it up in a brown and it goes so well with the rest of the colours in the outfit. It also looks like he might have sized down to get that more fitted look. The shorts are from a brand called Gorilla Group. I'm not too familiar with them, but they look to be a Gorp core lover's dream. They specialize in high quality tech wear. I couldn't find these exact shorts, but they are a three quarter length cargo short with plenty of pockets and places to add attachments. I don't think it would be very difficult to find a similar alternative. The attachments he has on the shorts are from a brand called Orbit Gear. These are another tech wear company that I'm not very familiar with. The exact pieces he seems to be rocking are possibly two of the MK23 holsters. Accessorizing shorts like this is just something I would never think to do and it's why I love looking for inspiration online. The shoes are the Nike ACG Antarctics, which are very much a performance shoe, but they just look so good, don't they? I definitely think he's picked up the best colorway and it goes great with the earthy tones of this outfit. He's topped the outfit off with a few key accessories that really do differentiate this outfit from the UPS man. First is the Tani or Tani sunglasses from Braindead. These have a killer steampunk vibe to them. He also has a nice clean looking leather belt, which really gives the outfit a bit more substance. I think if the tee was just tucked into the cargoes without a belt, it would look sort of lazy and unconsidered. Finally, he has a crossbody bag, which he says came with the Gorilla Group shorts. I do quite like these larger crossbody bags when done correctly, because they're practical and add a bit of interest. The next outfit stood out to me because it's made up of pieces that I'd never think about putting together, but this guy makes it look great. He's got a trapper hat on, which is vintage. I'm not sure if it's real fur or not, but you can easily get faux fur versions, which look exactly the same and are probably just as warm. He then goes with the Tom Ford shades, which threw me off a bit because it's a very wintry fit, but I suppose you do get cold, sunny days. I couldn't find this exact model of Tom Ford glasses, but they look to be an oversized transparent frame with an orange tinted lens. I do think they have quite a big impact on the outfit. Without them, it would be very much a workwear or hunter vibe, but adding them in takes it to a more playful and fashion forward look. Now the jacket completely threw me off. At first glance, I assumed it must be from a high-end fashion house because it looks quality. But then he turns around and it's from Echo. Echo has a bit of a bad reputation here in the UK. It's very chavvy and a lot of their pieces just aren't very appealing. But this jacket is absolutely stunning. The brown leather and fur details obviously match the hat perfectly. I couldn't find this jacket anywhere though, so I'm assuming it's vintage. But it's just bizarre to me that they ever produced this jacket because the style is so far away 
from anything they've released in recent years. The jeans are from Weekday, and although he doesn't say which model they are, I have no doubt that they are the Astro loose baggy jeans. I've got some weekday jeans myself and I can definitely vouch for them. They're reasonably priced and they have loads of different cuts and fits, so you can't go wrong. On feet, he's gone for the Yeezy NS LTD boots in khaki. I can see why these boots would be very polarizing. They're definitely not my style and if I was putting an outfit together like this, I'd probably change them for something else. But on the other hand, I can appreciate how they look good in this outfit, the way he's styled them. Just like the glasses, they add a bit of playfulness to what would otherwise be a very much workwear type outfit. And I just think it's fun. The last outfit I love because it just seems so easy and basic at first glance but then you notice a lot of thought has gone into it with some of the pieces. Plus, some of the poses he's doing are unreal. The cap and tee are from his own brand called Castellet. Sorry if I've butchered the pronunciation. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I absolutely love that t-shirt. He's gone for a super crop on the length and then a wide oversized body and arms. This is basically the kind of t-shirt I'm always looking for when I want something oversized. I think the cropped length just brings so much to the table in terms of styling. It gives you an effortlessly nice silhouette. The jeans are super special. They're Jabot jeans in a black on black colorway. Again, sorry about my pronunciation. There's a lot of difficult things to pronounce in this video. But Jabode was big in the 80s in the hip hop scene with their iconic straps and multi-pocket designs. They're becoming more popular again these days with the resurgence of oversized clothing. I'm not too sure where the shoes are from. He says they are unlisted square toe shoes. The only thing I could find that looks like them is from a brand called Kenneth Cole who seem to have a collection called Unlisted, so maybe they're part of that collection. Either way, they look so good with this outfit. As I said in my last video, smart shoes don't have to just be for smart or formal occasions. This is a super casual outfit, but the shoes look flawless with it. The denim jacket is another vintage piece, but he doesn't say which brand it is. It's probably not Levi's because we can't see that red tab on the front pocket, but it does have a nice boxy wide fit similar to the t-shirt. So he keeps the same shape and silhouette whether he's wearing it or not. All right, so there are five more of my favorite outfits at the moment from our streetwear. Remember to go and show your support for the users who posted these on Reddit. I'll leave the links down below. Hopefully they've given you some styling ideas and inspiration that you can incorporate into your own outfits. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.